Hey, what's up guys, it's Fish here and welcome to another epic battle on Total War Warhammer. Today we're going to be taking a look at an Elven Fortress, which is uh, probably a first on my channel. I don't think I've really looked at many Elven Fortresses, or I don't think there are many Elven Fortresses out there at the moment on the workshop. But this one was really, really cool. I love the size of it. It doesn't feel too big. However, it is definitely on the big end of the, all the maps on the workshop, that is for sure. However, we do have a replay sent in, which should hopefully be a lot of fun with the Elves defending against the beastman and orc incursion and hopefully the elves will be able to hold back the oncoming hordes which should make for a very very interesting battle so what we'll do is we'll run through the map itself and we'll look at the army comps really quickly and then we'll jump straight into the battle so if you guys want to go ahead and skip straight to the battle i'll leave a skip to battle timestamp in the description just open that up and then that should take you and click on the, the timestamp and that should take you straight to the beginning of the battle if you find this a bit boring but i feel like it's only fair that we do run through the actual map itself because the modder has spent quite a lot of time on actually designing it so i want to kind of explore it as best i can so i'll start off on this far left hand side which isn't really utilized in the actual battle itself there's not really many elves up here defending but this is a possible place where the elves can defend and have a pretty nice position they can stick soldiers all along here we can actually see some uh, wild riders back here as well which we'll get onto at some point but this is a really nice like elven i guess like city like built into the tree itself i think that just looks really really cool i like that a lot and i love the pathway up to it as well if we go and look on the other side as well we can see that we have a nice little fortification right here where some hawk riders are and just some nice like terrain everywhere you know a few more houses set around it kind of brings the actual city to life a little bit and actually it makes me think that elves do actually live here which is always good for a modder to do that now if we make our way to the main fortifications as the enemy comes and spawn on here we can see there are a few paths up i think there's three paths up to the main kind of initial defense right here where there are a few choke points, like one over there to the left, one in the center, and one in the far right where the enemy can attack. Then as they make our way up here, we kind of go into the fortress itself. So that's more of like an outer defense. But then we go into the fortress under this really cool boulder set right here with all these statues of the elves themselves, and we make our way into the city, which is, again, I like the way how the city is kind of split up into two parts. So we make our way in, then it kind of devolves. I'll go ahead and open up this map as well so you guys can see a bit better. Then you can kind of take two paths here where the defenders can either defend both you can go up this way which again just leads you through in the undergrowth really overgrown and again makes you feel like this is very very lived in and there's a lot of uh, elves all just still in here so we can go ahead and go up this path again there's another way up here where the elves can defend hopefully these elves can actually shoot off out here and uh, kind of hit away at the enemy as they kind of push. I'm hoping to see that some of these elves which they have situated up here, these away watchers, can actually shoot down. But I'm not sure if that's possible. There's also another way up. If you go all the way around this left flank, you can make your way up here. But then you go ahead and you, if you turn right here, you continue going up the tree and you can go and make your way into the center of the tree itself. And this is kind of where the final stand will occur if the enemy can make it this far. We go down the other side, we've got these really beautiful statues right here along with loads of these, uh, these stones from the elven forest as well looking awesome I really am excited to see what the High Elves uh, fortresses and cities and stuff like that are going to look like. That's going to be great. Again, if we make our way down as well, we can see oh, there's actually four paths into here, but all three paths. There's two side entrances and there's one up here, which is which is good. You know, it allows the attackers to really kind of you know vastly move around. And again, there's loads of houses everywhere. So that is the map itself. Really looking cool. You can go ahead and download it. I'll leave a link in the description down below. And then let's go run through the army comp. So we'll start off with the enemy army. We've got four Cygors on the front line. They are supported by some Ongor Raiders. Again, this is kind of like a missile force for the Beastmen. They're probably going to get slaughtered. Then we have a ridiculous amount of... Uh Oh, oh my god, we have so many Doomed Over Catapults. That's going to be hard for the elves to hold back. There's five Doomed Over Catapults. It's just disgusting. That, that, that contributes to spam right there in my book. And the four Cygors as well. I'm not sure how the elves are going to hold this back. Uh, then we have a bunch of these Ongor uh, Spearman herds with shields. Again, not really a strong force. It seems like they spent a lot of their money on artillery. Then we have a bunch of these trolls. I think three units of trolls. They're supported by Orc Biggins and some of these Night Goblin Fanatics. We've also got an Iraq rock and some black hawks a lot of black orcs along this left side then we have back here for the elves for the, yeah, for the elves we have some of the sisters of a fawn uh, a lot of sisters of a fawn by the looks of it hopefully these guys can really cause some damage then because they're going to need to we also have some wild riders with shields as well i've never actually seen the wild rider shields they look pretty cool 
I definitely enjoyed them. And then also on this far left hand side, we also have some more wild riders with shields as well. So a lot of cavalry in the back. Hopefully these guys can find nice hits on the enemy lines. Make our way to the front. We have some of these glade guard along with uh, some dryads. We were going to be kind of acting as a frontline meat shield. We keep on going along the line. We also have some more Treekin and a lot of these Woodland Rangers along with some Eternal Guard as well. I love the look of the Elves. I think they just look so clean and, yeah, just really, really nice looking. I can't wait again to see the High Elves. I think they're going to be great. We also have two Eagles and a Forest Dragon along with uh, Derfu as well. The rest of the army, though, we do have some War Dancers, some Woodland Rangers and lots more Archers. I think I'm just going to leave it there for the army comps because you guys pretty much know, you know, the size of these armies and we can always see as we go on so we've got some more eternal guard back here guiding this kind of right side with lots of archers everywhere let's get this battle started i want to see where these uh, rocks are going to come flying in i guess they're going for the giant eagle one of them finding a pretty nice hit doing a decent amount of damage to the giant eagle if they can whittle these down early that would be great but i mean look at them doom diver catapults that is just pure that's just gross luckily i think a lot of the elven units are hidden which is super smart by the elven player because for the, for the fact that the elven player has all these units hidden is just going to go ahead and mean that they have to kind of use their rocks and their missiles on less less desirable targets the sisters of a fawn oh no the hawk riders which is something i missed are actually going to be making their way in hopefully these guys can get some damage but immediately the cygors are going to be finding some direct hits on the hawk riders taking down about four or five of them which is not good they're going to get a volley off and then they're going to be retreating back hopefully they can keep as a moving target I think a lot of these missiles are also going to be trying to focus down some enemy lines. Yeah, they're, they're trying to shoot the, the Hawk Riders as well. But these guys are just going to be kind of constantly moving, getting some nice harassment shots off. If they can focus down the Doom Diver Catapult, that would be perfect. Because there's so many of them. It might even be worth just going to melee combat, if I'm honest. Just trying to take them down that way. Uh, you know, it's going to start off with a pretty heavy skirmish phase, which is to be expected. If, if the Beastmen didn't bring this many uh, this many missiles, I think they would have got wrecked by the amount of the elves. So we're going to watch this skirmish phase, and if it does drag on, I will make sure to skip it on. So don't worry, guys. If, if I feel like this is going on for way too long, then I will make sure to, to you know just cut this out. Again, because I haven't seen this replay. I was sent in by one of you guys, so I don't know how, uh, how good this battle is. Hopefully, it's going to be really good. Obviously, I really just want to show off the map a bit more than, than anything else, but I, I'm sure the battle will be great, and I'll cut out any boring bits so hopefully that is okay we actually have two units two units of way stalkers making their way out and the great thing about these guys is they can shoot whilst they're being whilst being invisible so none of these missiles from the beastmen or the orcs can actually hit these guys and by the looks of it they're making their way forward and actually harassing the enemy general kazrak is getting pinned down right now which is great uh, that's going to do plenty of damage the hawk riders are coming back in to harass and i think these way stalkers are immediately going to be focusing down these cygors and the doom diver catapults if they can take out some of their artillery early on that would be awesome awesome i think the hawk riders are finally getting some shots off now again on these cygors taking out their artillery taking out their range force is really important in this battle i think and i'm hoping that these waste stalkers can get that done i'm sure they can and um, but these hawk riders are definitely going to be struggling oh they're going to be going in for a nice little charge off onto the ungor riders but then, this, <laughs> then these, these spider riders are hilarious with the gobos on them the Gobo Riders are immediately going to be silencing and frying them back. Uh, killing quite a few of these Hawk Riders in the process. But again, the Hawk Riders can shoot whilst moving. And they can get out of there and still cause quite a lot of damage. So again, this battle is going to end up being a pretty heavy skirmish phase, if I'm honest. The Waystalker is doing decent amounts of damage. But overall, the, the Hawk Riders are actually getting cut down by a lot of these Spider Riders, which is great. For the, for the goblins, you know, taking out that key missile target is pretty impressive. And as soon as the enemy forces get closer to these waystalkers, they're going to be revealed. However, the elves still have you know, quite a lot of cavalry hiding in the wings that they can kind of approach on the enemy. Oh, that's not going to be good news. The spider riders are going to be coming into view of these glade guard. And they're going to be pinning down and getting lots of shots off on this huge cavalry movement up this left flank. If this cavalry engagement can make their way through the actual gaps. But look at all these arrow fire coming in now. And these guys are super clumped up. This is going to be brutal. Oh, what an ambush by the elven players. Pinning down so many of these units. They're going to be doing some great damage. And I think these dryads are going to manage to go ahead and slow these guys up. If they can hold them in place. Yeah, look at all these units just appearing from nowhere. These spider riders just coming into a perfect ambush. Look at all these missiles coming down now. And just harassing the entire line. 
This is going to be huge for the Elven players. Killing all these Spider Riders. Holding them up with cheap Dryad units. This is going to be awesome. And even if the Spider Riders try and get the hell out of there. They're going to be taking so much damage as they try and retreat. If we press K we can see. Yeah look how much damage these guys are taking. They're just getting smashed from every side right now. That is a really nice set ambush by the enemy players. The main assault is going to be setting up now and the Ungor Riders are going to be trying to get as close as possible to the Elves and the, the missile fire is just relenting right now. Relentless Archer Fire. Durfu is just coming up because why the hell not? Look at him. He's just like, yeah, this is my land. You guys get the hell out of here. The Ungor Spears are going to be making their kind of front line. I guess they're here to absorb a lot of the enemy missile. What are you doing, Durfu? A beautiful explosion right there. These Ungor Spears aren't going to do, aren't going to do shit. At the moment, like, I really don't think the Ungol Spears are a good unit to stick up first. We've got a Devolve right here? What, what spell did we get here? Did do a lot of damage, but again, it doesn't really need to. The Elven Missile, missile Fire is just going to be hitting everything. And that's, that's kind of what the enemy want, though. They want these archers to be revealed so that the missiles, the Doom Diver Catapults and the Cygors can pick these out, these archer units, and start hitting them. And also start using their own missiles as well. These Night Goblins are going to be picking away at the Elven forces as well. So that's exactly what they want. And really all they're doing is committing a large portion of their weaker units to this engagement. Definitely does look cool though. The Minotaurs are making their way up with great weapons. Durfu definitely does need to be extremely careful. The Treekin are up here. But if, if the Minotaurs manage to make their way through here and engage onto Durfu, his health is going to go down so quickly. The Elven players on this front line need to make sure that they hold this line and just support Durfu as best they can. There's a lot of Treeking coming in here. Oh, some Treeking getting raised from the ground by the looks of it. That is awesome. I don't actually know what this route is called, but it looks absolutely spectacular. That looks sick. Is he doing damage? I don't know. That was really cool. I've, I've not really seen much of the Elven spells that much. This right-hand side is going to go in for another engagement now. We've got more Minotaurs in the enemy ranks. They're going to be getting pinned down by the Elven Archers, and that's exactly what the Elves want. They want to slow up these Minotaurs with cheap just Dryads, and then use their Archers to uh, really good effect just to go ahead and get loads of HP damage on these guys. We're getting a little bit of FPS lag here, but, you know, that's just mainly because we've got a lot of soldiers fighting, you know. Over 8,000 soldiers all clumped up. It's going to be a little bit laggy. That is for sure. The Black Orc or the Orc Biggins are kind of just waiting back, letting the Beastmen do their bidding for them. We do have two Giants engaged on the front line. Durf is going to be going back and forth. We have a Forest Dragon as well. This battle replay is turning into something epic very, very quickly. Flock of Doom going down on the rest of the enemy soldiers. The Cygors are continuing to harass the enemy back line, getting some huge hits off on these Woodland Rangers. The Elven, Elven Archer line is still harassing the back lines of the enemy as they kind of push forward, which is a, good, a smart move. You know, taking out these archers is going to go ahead and definitely minimize the capacity of these guys. The Hawk Riders being in the back as well is going to be getting some huge hits off, but they're not really doing much damage to these Cygors, really. The arrows are doing like almost no damage whatsoever. So maybe it'd be better to go ahead and focus down this, this group of Centigors, maybe, as they're, you know, they're clumping up, and that's exactly what the Elven player is going to do. The main line, I don't know, this looks like it's going very much in the Beastman favour. However, they are having to commit a lot of forces to do this. Like, a lot of forces. And the Elves are kind of just sitting back and shooting. They've got reinforcements on the way as well. These Eternal Guard are making their way over as fast as they can to go ahead and resupply the line. We've got a lot of Dryads. We've got some more Glade Guard making their way over here. And some of these wood, uh, Wildwood Rangers as well. So even though the initial line does look like it's about to fall, there's reinforcements coming in for the Elves, which is going to be huge and help push back the initial assault. The Archers, again, are just finding such good targets. Like, this ambush on the right-hand side is just giving them so many great cross-sections that it's just, just minimizing the amount of forces the enemy can send. Now, again, the York players are reinforcing. They've got a lot of their own missiles over on this side, and they are also reinforcing. And again, there's a lot of wild riders still left remaining over here. We've got some Sisters of the Fawn, two units of that, and some wild riders, and some wild riders over here. So these guys are really just kind of sitting back and waiting to see what the enemy do. One of the enemy generals, Kazrak, has gone in to actually kill this forest dragon, which is pretty smart. If they can take out this forest dragon before it really does a lot of damage. That is going to be awesome. However, Durfu is going to continue to cost some more spells. Oh, that could be the, the uh, spirit up there on the right-hand side. A really cool spell, though, going off. I wonder if it tells me what it is. It doesn't, but it seems to be doing some damage and slowing them up. Definitely a cool-looking spell. 
The elves are fighting hard. These giants need to go down ASAP. If they have any more archers to send and focus these guys down, like, I'm really hopeful that these guys will start shooting. Uh, these glade guards will start shooting on the giants. Taking them down is going to be so important. I think Durfu is casting more spells. If he can, he should get some health back. This right flank is starting to run out now of soldiers. A lot of the archers have kind of used up all their ammunition, meaning that the enemy can just keep on pushing, and they are definitely noticing that and pushing a lot of these soldiers. Now, the scary thing is, if, if these routing troops come across these wild riders, that's going to kind of give the enemy a glimpse into the actual assault itself. We go ahead and continue to see, yeah, there's a lot more soldiers coming in then, a lot of these old big guns, and these archers, as I said, have almost you know, a couple shots left at most. So once the arrows run out, we actually have some wild riders making their way in as well. I love the look of the wild riders. They're so awesome. The double-edged spears just look so cool. One of my favorite looking elven units. The Dryads are doing their best though. I think the Dryads have been the MVP of this engagement. They managed to hold their more expensive units in place while the elves just shoot them to pieces. And that's cost the elves a lot of soldiers. The enemy forces are still not really causing a nuisance. Oh, nice. There's a unit of wild riders making a break for it. Just ripping through the savage orcs there. Perfect as the, orc, uh, the uh, rest of the enemy forces go ahead and continue on. A lot more of the wild riders getting an epic hit on these Doom Diver catapults. Taking these guys out will be so important. You can see so many gobos are just getting run down by these wild riders. That was an awesome hit right there. And it looks like the orc player is being a bit slow to react. He has soldiers here ready to help out. And he's just not sending them. So that's going to be huge for the, or for the Elven players. Taking out these Doom Diver catapults is going to be massive. A lot of missile fire going down. I really hope they actually manage to make it into the fortress itself. But I don't know. The Elven players look like they're just holding back the entire advance right now. I think this left flank is definitely crumbling. And as soon as they reinforce this left side, it's going to make it's going to allow them to go through. But have they lost too many soldiers right now? Taking out, Doom, taking out them Doom Diver catapults are huge right now. And I think they pretty much took out every single one. That was a really nice move by the cavalry. The sisters of the form popping some of their uh, some of their runes, or not their runes, but their magic. And the savage orcs are finally going to be charging into them. The sisters of the form don't really want to be engaged. They're more of a skirmisher cav unit. So these savage orcs cutting these guys down are going to be pretty good for them. However, again, killing them doing the catapults is just so goddamn good. Really is. They're going to be chasing the Moffo, pushing them back. Has the other world, well, yeah, the rest of the cavalry is still just chilling, not really doing much. So that's good. They've still got that kind of reserve unit. But yeah, the front lines now look like they are in full retreat right now. Durfu is fleeing for his life as best he can. He does actually have a gore ball, slowly making his way on. Flock of Doom is still going down on the rest of these guys. Hopefully Durfu can make it back. But the rest of the units are falling back to the inner city itself and trying to get ready in here. How cool would it be as well if there was some way to actually just collapse these boulders down on the incoming attackers? That'd be such a good defense right there. The elves are looking pretty good, though. They have lost the entirety of the first army. As you can see, it is in retreat. However, they still do have a, you know, a secondary army ready to hold. But now the orcs are managing to cut down these, uh, these war dancers right now. And they're going to be running from the battlefield. Yeah, the orc begins are going to be too powerful for, for these guys. You know, ill-supported Ill these war dancers. Just can't really take on a large portion of enemy forces. They're great at taking out anti-large. And you can see that goblin big boss as well. Isn't that goblin big boss? It is, right? That goblin big boss is just tearing these guys apart, unfortunately. So these guys, you know, they're ill-supported, but there's not really much the Elven players could have done there whatsoever. The Centagors are running down the rest of the enemy forces. And this could be a really smart move to send these big group of Centagors right around the flank and start harassing the enemy forces. Because if they can make their way up through this side, I know it takes a long while. They can kill all of these archers. They can make their way down, kill these guys, and then actually go ahead and help out the main fight as they make their way through the forest itself. And back down onto the front line. Now, this could be a key engagement if they start sending them early. The, the remnants of the Elven players are going to fall back here. Durfu has gone back. He's bloodied and bruised, but he's going to make his... You know, he's still going to be alive, which is the main thing. The harassment is still going on on the front lines right now. Back in the reserve line. There's a lot of these Orc Biggins still left back. But again, you know, a lot of these guys have died, which is just huge. 
It really is. A lot of the enemy forces are making their way around here. I guess they really want to clear out this engagement. And then maybe, maybe we're going to push around this left-hand side. So let's speed things up whilst these guys clean this up. Because there's not a lot of action going on right now. The rest of the Sisters of the Fawn are going to try and escape. Yeah, they're trying to get the head out of there. One of them routing. But the York, the York Biggins are going to chase them down. Uh, but yeah, the Sisters of the Fawn are going to get out of there. So a nice little evacuation right there with them units. The Hawk Riders, I wouldn't be surprised to actually be out of ammunition now. Yeah, they're, they're, they've got no ammunition left whatsoever. They can still be a pretty potent, annoying force in the back. We actually have the Arachnorok back here and the Trolls. I'm not really sure what these guys are doing. I guess they were deployed out of range of missiles and the Hawk Riders, trying to go ahead and cause the enemy a bit of a, a problem, but that's fine. The enemy force is going to be pushing around. There's a large push on here, so are they going to go around that flank? That could be very interesting. They're killing the rest of the Treekin right here. And it would it could definitely be a thing if they try to push around that left flank. Hopefully they do just turn around the right side and try and engage on this center point. I feel like the Elves are in a really good position right here. Oh, some huge hits right there on the front line. The Cygors are going to be pushing up. And this is a really smart move. The Beastmen are down right now. They have had to use a lot of soldiers on that front line. So because of that, they don't have a lot of soldiers. So actually being able to just use their range to their advantage. And oh my god, just ripping apart this Eternal Guard. If they can weaken out this front line from the, from the Wood Elf, that's going to be great. It really, really is. And the Wood Elf is just reforming. They have to just take this punishment. They don't have a lot to silence this. You can see some Hawk Riders going back in. And another direct hit. Luckily that hit missed. But some brutal smashes in there. The Hawk Riders are going to be going in. But I imagine they're just going to be getting killed very, very quickly. I'm interested to see where these forces go. If they come back to the front line or if they continue going round the, round the flank. I'm interested to see because, again, there are still, there's still a lot of archers left. There's a lot of, you know, orc forces left. There's lots of trolls and stuff. So I'm excited to see where these guys go. I really, really am. And especially because they have... They've just run out of ammunition on these cycles, But these cycles can still be, you know, a potent melee force. So I think the enemy are going to continue just to push up their forces. I mean, they've already decimated an entire unit of Eternal Guard, pretty much. These guys take some missile fire or something, and they are going to be gone. But I think the Elves have weathered the storm right now. I think the Elves definitely have the advantage in this battle so far. Especially if these Saigor hits continue to miss. They still, have, they still have a better positioning. They still have a lot of archers left. I think the Waystalkers are up here as well, shooting out. Yeah, there's a Waystalker right here, shooting from the wood. He's now in range. He's going to be unleashing furious bolts onto these guys. Again, I'm still really curious to see where this army is going to go on this far right-hand side. Because, again, there's 10 minutes left of a battle, so there's still you know, plenty of a battle left. But I'm really interested to see if they're going to make one huge push through the center or if they're just going to try and spread out their forces. And by the looks of it, on the mini-map, they're going to be going for a big push in the center, which I think is smart. There's not a lot of forces here. Two Eternal Guard against Trolls and Giants and stuff, that's not going to go ahead and stand for much longer. Then they can really push in. Again, it's a bit harder to go through here. You know, you've got some really nice units here retreating back. A lot of Waystalkers here to focus down the enemy forces, along with the Deepwood Scouts as well. So lots of strong forces left. But yeah, again, I guess I don't really know how this battle is going to go, because realistically, the Elves don't have a lot of soldiers left, and the, the enemy still have, you know, Trolls, Giants, Arachnorok, Spider. You know, there's a lot of enemy forces left, so I wonder how this is going to go. Like, the enemy generals could just route. Like, EU enemy generals could route as we get another disgusting hit right there by the Saigor. That was just truly disgusting. That, well, that was really dirty right there. So the enemy archers are going to be coming up now. Now the, uh, the elven archers are going to be able to start returning fire, though, which is good news. They're going to be focusing down and uh, killing these archers pretty quickly if that's what they want. I'm not sure if that is what they want. Maybe killing these Saigors would be good. As the Saigors can definitely still be a threat. What, what, uh, do these guys have armor piercing out of interest? They have swift silver shards. I don't know what they do. I'm not sure if they're arm armor piercing or what. They're going to be volleying off so many shots now, which is good news. The other elven unit is going to be retreating back now. And it looks like they're going to be almost giving up this outer wall right now and letting the enemy kind of continue to pursue them. Yep, a lot of the units are going back now. These guys are reforming. They have to be very careful from the orc player. I don't know why this orc player doesn't just move his forces in. They're going to be pushing on again. We still have eight and a half minutes, so there's still plenty of time for this battle to erupt. And I really feel like it could go either way. If Beastmen don't have a lot of soldiers left, but the Orc player, look at that force still from the Orcs. This battle could really go either way, which is awesome to see. The Saigor is going to be making his way into the actual engagement. This is definitely turned in for a user-submitted replay. Like, this is, this is definitely a, a fun replay, that is for sure. 
There's something which I don't know where it's going to go. It's definitely pleasantly surprised me. And if you guys want to send in replays, feel free to do that. The Cygors are going to be getting pushed back and actually almost out making the, uh, the Eternal Guard go out of position. Which is not good because the Minotaur is going to get a perfect charge off on this Eternal Guard. And if I was the Elven players, I'd be falling back these archers. They still have so much ammunition left. And I mean, they might take down one Cygor, but there's still so many enemy forces left. Killing this entire unit of Minotaurs is good, though. They're obviously very weak. Kazrak kind of went in a bit too deep. And he's going to be going. Is he going to go down? Or if they don't retreat him, he's dead. He is so dead. Retreat him. Get him out of there. The Elven Archers are going to take him down. Are they? Oh, it's so close. The Cygor is trying to get onto them. Oh, my God. That is so close. He's so low. Quickly, silence these Archers. The, the Ongor Raiders are focusing them down. Oh, my God. This could literally... He's got 500 health left. Don't bring him in. Run him away, for God's sake. The AO. Oh, my God. They managed to keep him alive. That is insane. I was not expecting Kazrak to still be alive after that. The Waystalk is still there. The Waystalk can kill him. He's under 300 HP. The Waystalk is invisible. He's taken a ton of Ongor missile fire, but he has a lot of HP. If he can take him down, he's down to 300 HP. If he can ramp him, that's going to be massive for the Beastman army. Focus him down, take him down. He's down to 300 HP. One or two more shots. Is he routing or he's still alive? Oh my god, they, they're going to route the Waystalker. Kazrak is so lucky to still be alive right now. So goddamn lucky to still be alive. A, a Mage Blast coming in, but he's down to 75 health and he's still not routing. Wow, that is absolutely massive there. The enemy forces are going to now be able to have perfect position right now. I would be so careful with Kazrak because if he goes, the entire Beastman army will go. There's not a lot of them left. There's a lot of orcs left, but that's about it. So they're going to be making their way into the actual fortress itself. Again, a lot, a lot, not a long, long left in the actual replay. So I really am curious to see how this battle goes now. Are they just going to funnel through this gap and these archers are going to tear them apart? There's obviously a lot of eternal guards still left remaining. I really hope they do go ahead and just push through here in full force. I feel like that it has to be the main plan. And I mean, this this city laws looks so goddamn sick. Look at it. The modder has done a great job. And we don't really get to see too many elven cities, like, at all. I think this is like, one of the best ones I've seen. And in very few elven cities I've actually seen in the, in the, uh, on the mod workshop, that's for sure. Yeah, they're coming through now. Trolls, Arachnoroks. I don't know. I originally thought the elves had this, but I feel like... I feel like the... Oh, we're going to click on play, obviously, now as well. I feel like the uh, the orcs just have so much left now. The missile fire coming in. Like, it's going to be a it's gonna be a bitch to kill this Arachnorok right now. Lots of arrow fire coming in. The Eternal Guard forming up. And they're going to be making their way to the front lines. So much missile fire coming in. This Arachnorok's just going to be charging forward, along with the help from the, tr the trolls as well. There's going to be so much missile fire coming in right now. I want to press K so we can see how much damage these guys get. Because look how much the Eternal Guard have just been wrecked. So much missile fire coming in, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. We have Durfu casting a spell right now. Hopefully that's going to help out. A nice little explosion right there on these guys. But I'm just not sure if there's enough Elven infantry right now. There's some more Elven infantry making its way in. But this Arachnok is still just pushing forward. Luckily, we do still have a spell singer still left remaining. Hopefully, going to be doing casting some bonuses on these guys. Oh, yeah, it does look like the Arachnorok Spider is going down. And for some reason, for some reason, Kazrak just ran forward and got slain immediately. I don't have a clue why he did that. As we get another troll going down, that's going to be huge. I feel like the elves might have this now. Even they had the, the orcs had, the, had it in the bag, not in the bag maybe, but they definitely had a great advantage, but losing the beast in general is going to be massive, they still have so many units left to send, but they're just attacking in droves, they need to attack all together, they still had a lot of Ongor Raiders, they're going to send these Ongor Raiders up first to absorb a lot of the ammunition, but again, yeah, a lot of the trolls, a lot of the, the Arachnorok making its way back, you know, this thing's going to come back, but still, the Beastman Giants are in there along with the Cygors, I don't know. I feel like just losing the Beastman, uh, losing Kazrak is just huge in this engagement. It really is. The Archer Fire has all day, and as long as the Elven Infantry can hold, I think they've got this. I really do. The rest of the force is making their way through. We've got Durfu po popping a Flock of Doom right there. If he can lower the morale of these guys, which I believe Flock of Doom does do, that's just going to be it. The Cygors running for their lives. The Arachnorok is the Arachnorok back. It is barely alive right now. All the missile fire coming in. The Eternal Guard sending that one down. Yeah, I feel like the elves have got this. But I really feel like the elves, the, the orcs could have done so much better there. I mean, I'm not one to judge. You know, obviously they're just trying to have a fun battle. But 
That was brutal, and I think the elves are going to be able to push these back. The last of the Savage Orcs are making their way up. The Eternal Guard are going to be holding firm, but there's some Woodland Rangers there. Death is going to be retreating back. Actually taking some hits from the own missile fire. The Ongor Raiders, I imagine, are going to be helping out the Arachnot Queen up on my right-hand side, just scuttling around the trees. Well, we can see where Kazrak's trailer, uh, chariot went down. Yeah, and a lot of the enemy forces are just getting smashed back. They've still got so many men just pouring in. They could have taken this slowly, and I think they could have pushed this back. But again, the balance of power was always in the Elven favour towards the end of this battle. So maybe they just didn't have enough no matter what they did. But look how look how little the, uh, the Elven infantry was left. If they could have destroyed these, the trolls could have been overwhelmed. The archers chasing them down. I don't know, it could still, it could still go on either way, but I felt like the elves have got this. The band's power is pretty in their favour. They've still got 1,500, but the enemy still have 2,000 men left. That's pretty insane. I feel like they're just going to wrap, but how long's left of the timer? I think these elf, elven archers are just going to be whittling them down. There are some black orcs left, though, remember? And if these trolls can make their way forward and, like, get onto these missiles and silence them, that, that could be huge. But I don't know if the trolls have enough uh, HP left to actually do that. I love the missile fire coming in right now. I think that just looks so awesome. I love the architecture of this city. I really hope they do do more of uh, of of, elf, of these wood elf maps. You know, stuff like this is just really cool. Because unfortunately we didn't get to fight all the way up, but I kind of like that we didn't get to fight all the way up into the, the upper levels. I feel like this was like a really nice courtyard battle and we had a really nice frontal engagement as well. 50 seconds left, yeah. I feel like the, the orcs and the beastmen just don't have anything left. The archer fire is just too intense right now. And there, Grimgore's going to go down, just getting shot to pieces. And that's going to wrap the entire enemy forces. The Waystalkers have pulled out their swords now. I believe the Waystalkers are out of ammunition. They look really cool. I love the look of the Waystalkers with their two-handed swords. Or two one-handed swords, I should say. The rest of the Archer Fire coming in, cleaning up the rest of the battle. And we can just triple speed it here as we see the rest of the Elves pushing down. The Elves did still have a decent force there. They had about... Not a lot of men left, but they had an okay amount. I don't really know where these black orcs are. Why are these guys not set coming in? All these orc big ones and black orcs. Like, what are these guys doing? They're just going to rout. The orc player definitely did not use his troops as efficiently as he could. But, oh, well, you know, sometimes players, you know, just don't, don't you know, have you know, a bad game or something. I'm sure that was the case. I mean, if you look at yeah, look how many men he still had there. 1,500. I'm sure he could have killed so many more soldiers. I think losing them doomed out of the catapults was huge, though. For the Elven player. Definitely a nice defense by Kenneku. Massive thank you for him to send it in. We look at the kills, we can see the Elven Archers doing a lot. The Elven Archers didn't even do that great. I think Geneku's army was the one sitting back in reserve. The Archers doing okay, definitely good. This was the main army which we saw fight though. We can definitely see a lot of these Dryads holding their enemy firm. And obviously these Wild Riders as well getting up 100 and so kills. Very nice. Look at the York player, we can see that they did pretty decently on a few of these units getting 50 kills. This will fork big and getting 110, which is very nice. Go down to the Beastman army, we can see that Kazrak one eye getting 104 kills. The Minotaur's doing okay, but the Cygors and the Giants being the real MVP of this battle. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this battle. If you did, make sure to drop a like and a comment down below. It really helps out the channel, and I appreciate it so goddamn much. So a massive thank you in advance if you're going to head and watch this far into the video, and if you drop a like, it would really, really do appreciate it. So thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys next time, and fish out.